He saw her silhouette and knew it was Anasha. There was no mistake in her physique. No one else in the village had her unique shapely curves. Her height was shared with a smattering few, but the contours or the graceful way she glided was distinctive to Anasha and no one else. He called out her name, Anasha, but she was too far away to hear him. She was walking towards the raging banks and the storm was roaring too loud for her to hear anything else. He quickened his pace, trying to catch up with her before she ventured into the troubled waters. Unfortunately, she got to the river a lot sooner than he imagined she could. What he saw next stopped him in his track. All of a sudden, strange things began to happen, almost like clockwork. He saw her stop when she reached the angry waters. He saw her squat to scoop some water with her delicate palm. The storm subsided at her gentle touch, and all was serene again. Next, he saw her taking off her slippers, his slippers, and wading into the calm golden milieu. Nothing was making sense to Alaba anymore. A moment ago, the river was looking for a human sacrifice or two. But with her touch, all the anime had dissipated, frothing away in tiny bubbles, leaving a tranquil night that was just as chilling to behold. The air was still and dank, choking him, and the erstwhile swaying trees had stopped, but he found it hard to breathe. All around him, everything was quiet, everything was silent, everything was fixed almost if not certainly dead. The only thing in motion was Anasha. She was unfettered in her determination to wander into the deep and all the elements were working in her favor. The owls watched starry eyed the crickets hibernated momentarily, and the howling of the wind was trapped in the crescent moon. He wondered how her touch always managed to calm him down every time without fail. Her touch was kind and unassuming, just like her kind and soft-spoken words, the same kind she had for everyone she met, or everyone who encountered her. He was half watching, half lost in his own thoughts, when he saw her wade into the waters reaching her ankles. He felt like saying her name, shouting, Anashi, come back! But the wind was too still to lift his voice, even for his own hearing. He could not bring himself to move as he stood transfixed and void of spirit, yet brimming with his own deprived emotions, lost in his own aphasia. He felt a bolt of jealousy knock him from inside as he watched her splash playfully in the crescent lit waters, each wave ever so anxious to return a caress to her cherry skin. He wanted to be the waters washing her breast. He wanted to do that badly. He whispered her name in another shout for survival, Anashe, but that was all he could muster. His emotions were felt in the stale air. The inebriated wind carried his thoughts projected at his affections. This seemed to antagonize the waters. The river began to sparkle, almost blinding, the moon and stars no longer helping. The sparkling gave way to a bubbling frenzy as a whirl tugged at Anashi, goading her further into the deep. She was waist deep in her quest and was fast submerged. The waters were still excited as the river reached her neck. He felt as if he could hear the waters jibe. There's nothing you can do now. The storm returned and he snapped himself free of his shackle. Chirping crickets were crying out as if in death. The owls took flight, followed closely by a flock of bats. The sky was a moving blanket of bats, crickets and dust as the betrayed wind tried to make up for lost ground. The storm had returned and the thunder bellowed as if from the deep.